I am in beautiful Pasadena, California. I'm in my, my office and I have my studio back there. My wife has a space where she does her thing over there. And yeah, man, just, you know, our daughter's in school, just finishing up finals today. She texted us that she's doing well today. And um, yeah, it's all good. That's happening, man. That's awesome. That's yeah. super exciting. Hey, like, yeah. uh, you know, wrapping up the, the year. The simple stuff is the best, man. As you get older, it's just the best. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Hey, man, rock and roll and family and uh, and all that stuff, you know, and friends. I've been blessed, man. I've been blessed. See all my Australian, all my Australian platinum records are over there. There's a little one. Oh, look at that! <laughs> look at that! Yeah. I mean, look, awesome. we've had we've had a very long relationship with Everclear down here. Like, we love you guys. From the beginning, man, you guys picked up on Sparkle and Fade, and then when we put out World of Noise, you guys picked up on that. And then Afterglow, yeah, it's been a it's been a wonderful relationship. And we there was a hiatus where we didn't come down there mm. for a while, and then we started coming down there. And that, since 2013, we've been down there every almost every other year since then, um, ex except uh, because of COVID, you know. Yeah, yeah, the thing. Yeah, the thing. The, the thing, thing that happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we, we, we almost got stuck in Hot Strike because the last tour we were, we did the Hotter Than Hell tour in 2020. Hey, that's and, right. uh In February. And we left four days before they shut everything down there. Man, how was the vibe then? Because I know I know for us down here it was it was super intense, like watching the rest of the world. We're going, oh, we'll be fine. We're all like no one cares about Australia. And then everything happened. How was the vibe on to that tour? Well, the vibe on the tour was great because no one was really talking COVID till pretty much the end of it. Like when it started, we were still dealing with the fires, remember? Yeah, you guys were yeah, on yeah, fire yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I remember our first show, I think, was in Canberra. And uh, it, at night, out the window, you could see, like, like miles away, just glow, just red glow, and then red glow, you know? And it was, like, it's kind of scary. Yeah, man. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, we were in, and plus, we were doing a tour called Hotter Than Hell in the midst of all those fires. I thought it was going to be bad luck. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> It, it, it did okay. That tour did really well. And um, yeah, so we're coming back and we're doing 17 dates. Man, it's Australia. insane. Nobody does that. Like bands will come in and they'll do three shows and sometimes they'll skip us up here and then they'll just leave and they won't come back for like 10 years. What? We usually do five to six dates, maybe seven. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you know, every, the one place we... You know, you either make it to Adelaide. If you go to Adelaide, you're probably going to Perth. But if you don't go to Adelaide, then you might not go to Perth because it's a long ways away. Yeah. It's, you know, it's like flying to the other end of, of the United States. And uh, it's, uh, but this time we're, we're going to, you know, we're going to, we're starting in Brisbane and then we're doing four, four, four dates around there and then down to uh, Melbourne and five dates around there and then up to uh, Sydney. Or maybe it's backwards. I don't know. <laughs> then, then, then we hit Adelaide and Perth and all that good stuff. Man, and a lot of a lot of names I can't even pronounce. So I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> it's it, it's exciting. It's exciting for everyone. That it's going to get the chance that usually wouldn't get the chance as well. Like who who came up with this crazy idea to do that many dates at the arts end of the world and give everyone the chance to experience Everclear life. Well, I don't consider it the ass end of the world. I consider it one of the best places in the world uh, because <laughs> they, you guys actually like American people and American culture. You know, you're one of the few places in this world that do. And so uh, as an American band, I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. Um, you know, I mean, we did, we did 16 dates last time. We did four of the uh, Hotter Than Hell festivals. Yep. And then we did three dates around each one. And then that seemed to work really well. And um, our our agent and promoter and, and uh, the people that put on 
hotter than hell, own a bunch of clubs and they're promoters as well. So they're going in on it and uh, they felt strong about it. And the first three weeks of sales have been, I'm told, pretty great. So it looks like we're going to do well down there. Man, can't wait. And it's going to be some rock and roll. Bring, bring all the rock and roll, mate. We need it to kick off the new year, that's for sure. But you've been celebrating uh, World of Noise 30th anniversary, which is uh, incredible. Um, and the, the remaster sounds amazing, dude. I've been cranking it. Thank you. Like, so uh, much better, dude. So oh, much better. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I have the original CD, too. Back in, yeah. like, but you have what you <laughs> have is not the original. You have the capital, the oh. capital remaster that came out in 94. The original um, CD that was made no one has that and it didn't come on vinyl or cassette there was only 500 made by tim kerr and uh i mean i don't even have one of those and that mastering's better but it's not as good as this but it's better than the one in in, that came out in 94 and uh that was uh they did that without even telling me and i almost sued them because they didn't have the right to do that but i'm like whatever I had bigger fish to fry. You know, we were working on, on. Uh, I was just trying to finish up Sparkle and Fade. So I'm like, you know, my my manager, not my manager, but my a r guy at the time was like, pick your battles, man. What's more important? This album or the first major level record? And I'm like, good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Sparkle and Fade, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be talking if it wasn't for Sparkle and Fade. Oh, you man. Know? That was the album down there that, that blew it wide open for us. So, um, yeah, I we had never seen anything like when we came to Australia the first time. There was 500 people at, at Sydney Airport waiting for us with signs and pictures of us. And it was crazy. It might have been more than 500. It was a crowd. That's and it was just like, oh, so this is what it feels like. Okay. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That album, that album is very, very important to me. Like I remember, I don't know your music. Uh, uh, there's certain times in my life that I, I can relate to it very deeply, and I've got very fond memories. And and it's evolved over the years too. Like, like musically and lyrically. Like when I was young, I, re- I remember I was I was went skating with my high school girlfriend, and Santa Monica was on the on the stereo, and then. You know, and I just listen to that album like so much. And then when I got married and I got divorced, the the songs took on a whole new meaning for me yeah. and helped me through that. And is it when you go back and listen to those those tunes, do they have they evolved their meeting absolutely. for you as well? Like, do you see them in a different light? Yeah, absolutely. But you know, I I also remember where I was emotionally and um spiritually mm. inside of me when i wrote those songs so i'm still connected to that but yeah i have different perspectives on everything it's and that's the sign of a good song that it holds yeah. up to time because it moves with you you know you listen to a lot of songs that you grew up with as a kid and you're probably like eh, it's fun but it's one it's more one-dimensional than i am now yeah because you're most you're hopefully you're more multi-dimensional than you were when you were 14 or 15 right you know <laughs> i mean some people don't aren't but you know god bless them but you know most people move on to other things that's why a lot of people stop listening to the music they used to listen to mm. and we get a lot of people that have come back and a lot of people that bring their kids in into everclear now and that connects with them as well which is amazing seeing it hit teenagers in early 20s and and then you've got people in their 40s and even 50s you know and um it's i just feel blessed that that i've been able to make that kind of music make that impact with people both on them and and to myself because you were talking about how you it that you grew up with those records so did i you know yeah yeah those were learning and growing experiences for me as well. You know, there's no there's no college you go to that teaches you how to make a rock a rock and roll record. You do it. You and know? but hey man, rock and roll is a college. Or universities yeah. we call it here. 
it teaches yeah, but, you. <laughs> yeah, but but that's the thing. You can't teach that. Nah. You can teach some things. You can teach how to push the button, how to, where to put the mics. You can learn that. But also a lot of that stuff is intrinsic well as yep. well of like how it feels and how it sounds. And that's why people who are really good at it have a lot of demand because it's it's something that you really can't do. It's like writing songs. You can learn how to phrase a song and, and build a song from a diagram, right? Yeah. You can listen to one of my songs and go, okay, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, chorus, verse, verse, B section, whatever. But that doesn't teach you how to write a song. You have to have it. It doesn't teach you how to come up with a melody. It doesn't teach you how to put things together in a way that sounds like you. That's just, you learn it. That's right. You learn it. And nobody sounds like you. Because there's not, like, out of all the rock bands out there, especially at that time, everyone was, they were mumble singing and they were, the grunge thing was, but Everclear came out and was just such a, just straight through. You cut through all that noise and sound, you you. sounded like yourself. And that's why I think it resonated with so much, especially down here. Everyone was a grunge band, you know what I mean, at that time. Yeah, yeah. and, and I mean, we had some of that coming from Portland, Oregon. We had some of that mm. kind of swagger, you know, that metal punk swagger. We were more into the punk than the, you know, like the Seattle heavy grunge thing. But there was some of that, especially in the earlier stuff, because I liked it. I liked some of it, but some of it, you know, I, I never wanted to make the same album twice. My job that I felt as a, as a writer, as a creative person, was to create music that sounded different from song to song, mm. but always sounded like Everclear. That's right. Whatever that is. And having, an, having a voice, having a band with a voice that's a definitive voice, I don't have a great voice, but you know it sounds like me, you know? And that's, that's what I've always tried to achieve. You know, my favorite singers and guitar players are you know, like people in the Pixies and, and Neil Young and, mm. you know, not not classically trained singers. Even though I like some of those bands, I like, I love Queen, I love Zeppelin, mm. but that's not what I, that, that was me, you know. More more punk and, and rock and roll in there. That's why I think it, it man, you know. I, I'm just, man, I'm 60 years old and I just love the rock and roll. I still love rock and roll. Like, hard, fast, grungy, just grimy, dirty rock and roll. I love it. The best thing. The best thing in the world. But, hey, this is something I did want to ask you. I mean, you've re okay. recently released uh, the Year of the Tiger single, which is great. I love how heavy it is. But, you know, it's a, album's done? Are you done with albums? Or is it? I think so. Yeah. I think so. For now, I like doing the singles. We're... I'm writing another song right now. We're going to record it in January. It won't be out till June. Mm. But um, I, uh, I I like recording a couple singles a year, doing little videos for it, you know, super serving the fans. I'm not trying to, you know, re recreate the wheel here. I'm not trying to, like, think that, uh, you know, we're going to sell millions of records. We're not. But we can take care of the people that have stuck faithfully with us. And and I love being creative. I just, when you make an album, it goes from being creative to creating product. Yes. And there's like, especially when you're in, in, on a major label, you're like, you feel like you're on this carousel, you're on this treadmill of like, write, record, produce, tour, what right and then repeat you know <laughs> repeat yeah. and repeat and repeat and there's only so much grist for the mill when you're not out living life and doing things and making good decisions making bad decisions that that gives you stuff to write about what's your thoughts on ai starting to to take over the art form now like i think it's only uh, a AI, time before it started say, writing songs you know you say AI? Yeah, artificial intelligence making art now 
And it's like, it's only a matter of time before people are running things through the thing and, and writing songs that way. I'm, I'm a little worried about it personally. I feel like, what are you worried? Uh, what are you worried about? I guess losing the soul and, and people's personal expression instead of just the throwing it out and letting the, you know, the robot out in the sky do it all, I guess. Brother, have you listened to possible? Have you listened to um, contemporary radio? I think I think we're already there. Ah, uh, true. Yeah. I, that's probably why because I stay away from. It. I usually listen to. Uh... <laughs> the... So if the, if that's a given, I mean, it it might get worse, but that doesn't mean you're going to listen to it. it doesn't yeah. mean I'm going to listen to it. I mean, it is what it is. It's 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 like this, you know, soporific for for the masses, you know. It's it's an opiate for the masses mm. when when you're talking about trying to make music that's like there's guys who are songwriters like okay we got to go to the fifth and then and then uh, then do this and then do this and we need a vocal um, melody that does this and this and this because that's what resonates with the most people right now and I'm like wow that's fucking boring yeah. <laughs> one to do and sad and uh i'm one no part of it but it seems to work but that's why you have um producers you know like they're they're constantly making records but artists are kind of coming and going it's kind of like the 50s in a way you know where you have a lot of really like mm. one hit wonders and um but it all sounds the same to me like pop music what they call alternative, uh, even rock, country, hip hop, they're all arranged and the vocals all sound similar. I, yeah. It's just like, you know, press play and there you go. And well, at least we still have amazing songwriters like you who are, you know, bringing the real honest stuff from the heart. And that's that, that was my point, I guess, you know, we'll always I don't want to see that. Always. We'll always think- be good. Yeah, always. I think the kids are starting to catch on to that. I think yeah. that's back around where I think maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're just on the cusp of, of the next rock and roll revolution where the people next, are gonna... the, new, the new Nirvana? We've no. been saying that for a while. No, not the new Nirvana. How about the new Slayer? Let's have a new Slayer. So <laughs> <laughs> that'd be cool. Um I, I was never a Slayer fan. I was I go older as far as my metal goes. I go Black Sabbath. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's that's where I go because I'm I'm older. But I, uh, I do like Slayer. I, I like I like I like metal. I like I like hard stuff. I like soft stuff. I like it all. You do, mate. I love that, and that's what I love about you. And uh, we can't wait to see you down here in Australia. It's going to be like what le- a m- month, less than a month by the time this. Goes up. Um, more Where are we now in the world? <laughs> it's Christmas. Our, man. I, I, our first show is the second of February. That's right. So, Christmas. and our last show, I believe, is the twenty sixth of February. So, wow. yeah, that's a lot of shows. Yeah, man. In a in a big country where people don't drive, you don't drive <laughs> from cities. It's true. I mean, you drive in the city, but you people don't like tour on buses like they do here you know you don't drive five six hours and get to another city you gotta fly yeah that's and, right uh, <laughs> it's so. a long trip dude it's a long trip but uh mate, I i'll be at the gold coast show that's for sure that's my my stomping ground awesome we'll, yeah. we'll see you there for sure yeah man yeah man but until then thanks for joining us on the show again man and uh hey all the best to you and your family for christmas and um we will see you Thank very you. soon Thank you a lot. Love you, brother. Thank you. Love you, brother. Thank you, sir.